Hi hobby friends! New year, new game. Let's paint up some Blood Bowl and we can have a think about how to get lovely illustration-y lights and shadows while we're at it. The first pass on these elves is in a nice, bright, true blue. You can get the exact paints I use in the description, but as always, it's about the colours, not the paints. So don't fret if you don't have my exact paint lineup. Over the blue, we throw down some punchy pink. And yes, we should take a moment to just enjoy the classic combo of blue and pink. Very pretty. I should also explain what the heck we're doing here though. Although these elves will end up in the box art compliant yellow uniform of the Wood Elf team, I also want them to have an almost cartoony, bold tonal variation over the shadows and lights. Generally speaking, shadows are cool, so we've gone to the most extreme option for our base shadow colour, blue. And midtones are a good place to put your rich colours, so for that we're going with pink. When we lay in our yellow in a minute, this will mix down to a lush orangey yellow colour. We will need a nice strong base for some true yellow at the top of the range though, so over all of that goes white. Notice how I'm limiting the angle more and more as I progress through these underpainting bases, so that we end up with just blue in the shadows, pink in the middle, and white at the top with gradual gradients all the way through. Time to add the yellow though, and contrary to my usual speed painting system, I'm not blasting all over with one paint here. On my palette I have four yellow tones, ranging from a saturated orange to a very bright yellow. These are all contrast or contrast style paints that, when applied, will interact with those base layers to give us loads of complex tonal variation for very little effort. By using multiple tones of yellow here, we can not only get the local shading across each volume from that underpainting step, but also an overall shift in lightness across the whole mini. That's why I'm working with only the darker yellow tones across the legs and saving the bright yellow for just the highlights on the upper body. Since this isn't an army project, just 12 little folk, I don't mind taking a bit more time on this stage and applying these four tones by hand. The trick here is to work on small areas quickly, chasing your paint around the mini and allowing them to run into each other and blend. If you're new to wet blending, contrast paints are a great place to start, since the long drying times will give you a chance at working the paints a little. Contrary to the advertised method though, we're not letting the paint pool too much into the recesses here. The shading work has been taken care of for us by the underpainting, and we need those shadowy recesses to stay nice and dark for our definition. Before the paint has a chance to dry in those nooks, you just need to void and dry your brush and vacuum up anywhere it's gathered too much. These contrast paints are acting as more of a filter here. You could get exactly the same effect using translucent inks as well, they're just not quite as easy to work with in this context. It's no great shakes if we end up with the odd coffee stain line here and there either, by the way. Of course, we're aiming for none, but there's plenty of time to fix things if the odd one does show up. Skin next, and 99% of the work is done for us here with good old Gilliman's Flesh. I do like to add a little extra something though, especially on elves, in the form of some dark magenta blush over the cheeks, nose and ear tips. The paint I'm using here is Volupus Pink, thinned out with some Vallejo Express Medium, the same stuff as Contrast Medium, and that's gently layered on in glazes. It's a small, subtle detail, but it really adds a bit of life to the minis, I think. We are still on the transparent paints for the boots, a cooler dark brown for the shadow areas and a warmer light one slathered onto the upward facing surfaces to get those bits blocked in. Add some magenta accent colour for the loincloths and with that it's time to tackle the metallics. We are sticking with the warm theme here but I avoided pure gold since that would likely either clash with or get lost amongst all that yellow. A nice coppery tone then, somewhat arduously based out with Scale 75's fantastic metal and alchemy paints. Oh, and as you can see, I also got all my grass down on those bases too. Now that the messy work is over, it's nice to have the basing material done so I can get a sense of how the mini is looking overall as I proceed. 
When the metallics were all based, I went in with a burnt umber oil wash to get those recesses nicely shaded. We aren't looking for all over grime here though, so that's applied pretty neatly just across the metallics and the odd place here and there where I want a bit more definition. It's more of a pin lining than a full on wash. When those oils were dry, I buffed things up with a couple of layers of light metallics, a process that I didn't catch on camera, unfortunately. I did find a camera angle that allowed both you and me to see through the magnifier though, so here's a little fiddly eye work to look at. We can get the effect of eyeliner by first painting the whole eye area black and then going over it with an off-white. I went for a bluish one, but a yellow off-white works too. The last big job is to add some brush strokes to those large areas we painted up with contrast paints earlier. This is one of those so-called optional steps, but I really think having a little brush input at the end here makes a huge difference to the overall feel of the mini. We can also fix any mistakes, push up those highlights and add a lot of fun texture. It's also the stage that can go on pretty indefinitely if you want it to, but I kept it simple this time, just touching up here and there. Throw on some masking tape and blast the grass with some white ink to get those pitch markings done and... That's it, my first ever Blood Bowl team all painted up and ready to throw some balls and crack some skulls. I'm really enjoying how stark yet colourful the contrast between the shadows and the lights is on these. That slightly cartoony pop all these bold colours gives them fits the Blood Bowl aesthetic pretty well I'd say. Hopefully this gives you a sense that, without jumping to beautiful but not always subject appropriate OSL, we can still pretty easily get some fairly dramatic lighting in a reasonable time frame. But seeing them in isolation like this isn't quite right, is it? There we go. It may be a still image, but at least it gives you a feel for the team as a whole. So, what do you think? Let me know down below, feel free to ask any questions you might have, and I will see you all next time.